Hi everybody, Jason here. I hope you're doing great. Today, we've got another episode of Ask Jason and it's from Gloria and this is a fantastic question. And actually, I get this question a lot because obviously I use these terms in my video a lot and a lot of people aren't familiar with Eastern philosophy and spirituality. So it is you know, obvious that you should inquire as to what these terms mean if I don't explain them in certain videos and so forth and so on. So please, if you have questions like that, send them on over if there are some terms that you don't understand and I will, and I will happily respond. And let's have a look what Gloria asked me. Hi, Jason. I'm new to your channel and I'm learning so much from your videos. But I have a question about Brahman and Tao. What are they and are they the same? Also, are they related to God in the West? Thank you, Gloria. Actually, there's a couple of questions, but I think that we can synthesize those into one because essentially if we answer what Brahman and Tao are, we will understand that if it's related to God in the West or not. So, so let's have a look at Brahman and Tao, right? Brahman is a Sanskrit word which comes from the Vedic tradition within India. So what we would think of it as Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma. And so Brahman means the ultimate reality, this substratum that is beneath reality, but also within reality itself. And it is one. There is only one reality. It's non-dual, and that's Brahman. Now, Maya, to give you some understanding of what that means, Maya is the illusion of separation or the illusion of duality. So this habit we have of measuring reality according to our own beliefs and so forth and so on, which eclipses Brahman, you see? So Brahman is this ultimate reality that we recognize and realize at the base of our being when we get out of this hypnosis of duality, when we start to peel the layers away of our persona, our jiva, and we stop this partiality of this and that. And we practice what we would call in Hinduism, neti, neti, not this, not that. So that's kind of a philosophy of, we could say almost negation of trying to get back to Brahman. But Brahman itself is this substratum, is this ultimate reality that where everything came from, but is within everything as well. And so to understand that, we need to understand Atman. Atman is the undifferentiated consciousness within all of us that is Brahman. It's not even a part of Brahman, it is Brahman. This is where people can actually misinterpret if someone says i am god from a hindu perspective people will misinterpret and think geez look at this guy he's arrogant <laughs> arrogant as all hell thinks he's god but it's not that it and and maybe he's that person maybe not you know conveying that in the best possible way what you could say is i am an aspect of god or a part of god but it is right to say Technically, I'm God itself, but there is no I. There is no Jason, there is no Gloria, and there is no anyone who's watching. That's all evaporated, you see. You, you need to be Brahman without the I. And Brahman itself is that ultimate reality. It's beyond name and form. It is that stainless reality, pure, that ultimate substance, and that's what Brahman is. It's, it's that which was before the Big Bang and that which is actually within everything out, coming after the Big Bang. It is that which will be there at the death of the universe and it will be there at the rebirth of the universe. Now, Tao is a Chinese word that it simply means way and the way. It's kind of this metaphysical psychology, so to speak, of, of the way of nature. Now, in relation to Hinduism, when we look at Sanatana Dharma, which people commonly think of as Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma is the eternal natural way. That's what a lot of people don't understand. When we translate into English, it's the eternal natural way. Even though there are all gods and it's very colorful in Hinduism, but it is about coming back into resonance with this natural way, this irreducible essence that is imminent within all life, but also transcends it, you see? And that is the Tao as well, that irreducible essence that is imminent within all life, but also transcends it. And you come into harmony with the Tao or with Brahman when you begin to let go 
of control. And essentially, when you let go of control, you are letting go of this illusion that you call I, as Gloria, as Jason, as anyone who is watching or listening. You let go of this illusion of I. And what happens is, is something takes over your life. Something lives you. It's already living you, right? But it's not at a conscious level. Do you see? It's not at a conscious level. When you begin to let go, you begin to feel it at a conscious level. You become an aperture for the universe to express itself. And, and I'm being serious here. This is what actually happens. This is the functioning, the natural functioning of the universe. But it can only be experienced at a conscious level when you begin to let go. And so that's why we practice meditation, both traditions. That's why we practice Tai Chi Chuan. That's why we, we do all of these things, why we study, why we, uh, in some sense, renounce drama and worldliness is to come back into harmony with the way things are. We're often caught up in the way that we think things are or the way other people think things are. You know, a lot of people watch the media and the news and they think, oh, that's the way it is. And it's like, Nope, that's not the way it is. Not from the level of Brahman or Tao. From the level of Brahman or Tao, everything is fantastic and great. But you're focusing on this minute detail in reality that says things aren't good, things aren't well. But is it true? Is it true? And only those who know if it's true or not are, are the ones who have gone into that and gone follow that path to its nth degree. So it's about letting go and coming back into alignment with that reality. And so, for example, if we use the river analogy in Taoism, when you let go of the banks of the river, and instead of fighting the current, you begin to just allow the current to move you wherever it needs, the river's power becomes your power. You see, this is what de is. De virtue in Chinese, is an extension of Tao. And that's where the, the Tao, the power of the universe, that ultimate force, if we're to use Star Wars analogy, becomes your power. And that's why when people see people who are very charismatic or very peaceful and, and have a good way of communicating, especially divine knowledge and, and wisdom, a lot of people will think, well, they're very charismatic or, you know, they're very blessed or so forth and so on. They are, but no more than you are. They've just understood something. There's a realization. They've realized you haven't. You see, that's all that's happened. So yes, in saying all that, Brahman and Tao are the same. But the way we think about them from uh, the way it's translated in the Tao Te Ching as opposed to in the Upanishads, it's, there's a completely different language and certain concepts in that around Brahman and Tao that make them seem somewhat unrelated. But they are completely related when you understand that they are the irreducible essence of the universe, the ultimate reality. That which is the mother of the 10,000 things you see, in the Tao of the Ching, the Tao is the mother of the 10,000 things. The 10,000 things is the manifest world. Yeah. It's the manifest world. It's everything, and not just the physical reality. We're talking about mind. We're talking about feelings, emotions, the subtle energy of the universe. Tao's before that, but it's within that. It, it flows through the veins of the manifest world of the 10,000 things. Same as Brahman. And yes, so they are the same. Now, are they related to God in the West? Put simply, no. Now, for the simple reason of this, in Eastern philosophy and spirituality, they never thought of a God or whatever you want to call it, lording it over the world. And there was not an idea of sin, good and bad, like if we look at Hinduism, for example, there's karma. So there's only checks and balances, right? You will have a debt to pay, but it's not deemed as good or bad because good or bad according to who? Whatever society or some other person. There's a lot of things we can get into. I've got a lot of videos actually on karma if you're interested in that perspective. So in Eastern spirituality, they never thought of 
a, a god lording it over them. So that's why in the Tao Te Ching it says, the Tao loves and nourishes all, but does not lord it over them. You see? Does not lord it over them. The Tao is animating through all of us the same. But it comes down to a realization, as I said before, the realization of letting go of control and of letting the Tao do you, so to speak, instead of you doing it. You can never do it, actually. That's an illusion. And that's why when you try to control your life, you begin to drown in the river. And to flow, you've got to let, you've got to let the river take you wherever it needs to be. So what we're talking about here when we're talking about God in the West is basically we're talking about an ultimate reality versus a creator God. And when we look in the East, the only created God similar to God in the West would be Brahma, not Brahman, Brahma, part of the Trimurti, Brahma being the creative principle of the universe. But Brahma is only part of, like I said, the Trimurti, the three, so Vishnu, the sustainer or preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. This is a process. They actually call this Trimurti the process of Brahman. So the, the out-breath of the universe, beginning with Brahma, the creative principle, then the universe sustained for a certain period of time, and then it goes through the path of Shiva. And our life on a personal level goes through that process as well. You see, we go through that process as well. We are created, we, our life is sustained for a certain amount of time, and then we go through our own personal time of Shiva, the destruction at the end. Can you recognize the witness within that whole process? That's the job, especially in Vedanta. That's the job, is to recognize the witness. And that's the essence of Zhuangzi. When there is no more this and that, you reside in the still point of the Tao. And so even saying Brahma as the creator still is different to the Abrahamic idea of the created God. Because even if we use the terminology of Ishvara, so Ishvara we could say is the creator God level in Hinduism. Right? We could say that that's the creator God level. So that it's, a, it's, a, it's a certain level. But that level is actually the same as the jiva level, the individual level, so, so my level as well. So it is a reality bound to reward and punishment, you see? It's a reality bound to reward and punishment. So, for example, in the Abrahamic faith, if I do good and so forth and so on, I'll go to heaven after death. Or if I do wrong and I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a troublemaker, then hell awaits me. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in the East, there's more of a checks and balances. You're not kind of punished. You just know that if I do a certain thing, I'm going to accumulate a little bit of karmic stock here that I will have to repay the universe until I've repaid my total debt and then I can merge in Brahman, you see? So yes, Brahman and Tao are not related to the God in the West because that's a creator God. And in some sense, is a low level within the Eastern spiritual paths. Because you're still talking about a reality where it's kind of tyrannical. So you're kind of governed, right? You're governed by something. It's not natural. What governs what in nature? Nature is like this, this harmonious reality where surely things do feed off each other and this and that, but it keeps a certain harmony and allows nature to thrive without having to interfere. Not like us humans, we will interfere with nature and consequentially we will destroy nature. And that's what we are doing, right? Instead of kind of moving with it and living in harmony with it. So that's kind of an illustration of the ultimate reality, Brahman and Tao. You are not gonna be punished for this and that by Brahman and Tao, it's the ultimate reality. It's indescribable. We cannot understand both of those from our, like what they say in, East, in the Eastern text, from our puny intellect. You have to let go of understanding. You have to let go of control and life itself to come into harmony with it. And what it is, can you intellectually explain it? Lao Tzu just simply called it Tao. And he didn't theorize about it. He didn't, uh, give any grand concepts or framework about it, even though there's 81 small chapters about the Tao. 
But those 81 small chapters about the Tao are about how the Tao functions in our life and how we can come into harmony with it. Not through striving, not through force, but by letting go. And so to come into harmony with the ultimate reality, you don't, you don't pray, you don't ask for blessings because it loves and nourishes all and does not lord it over them. Whereas if you are talking about God in the West, God in the West is about praying to God, about asking for blessings. It's a reality where you and God are separate. You see, this is one of the fundamental differences between the Abrahamic faiths and the Eastern paths. Is the Abrahamic faith says this idea that you and God are separate. So we have these ideas that men and nature are separate and so forth and so on. Whereas in the East, you are one with the Tao. You are Brahman. But the only thing that gets in that way is this illusion you have that you call yourself, that you think is permanent and lasting. But it's this small flicker in the universe. It's like a little light flickering. That little flicker, that one little flicker you see in that light, that's your life as an I, as a person. That may sound grim and depressing, but it's not. It's liberating. Because you're part of something much greater than yourself. And that is Brahman and Tao. So, Gloria, I hope that answers the question for you. I mean, I could talk about Brahman and Tao all day. You guys know that. <laughs> I could be here, you know, this could turn into a five-hour video. I don't want to bore you guys. But that's how enthusiastic I get about this stuff. And I hope you do too. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. And make sure you hit the like button. I, I know that... A lot of people say, how, do, how come your work doesn't reach a wider audience? As I've said in many videos, it appears that if you hit the like button, that helps the YouTube algorithm, helps my videos out, helps this knowledge get out to a wider audience if you value what I'm doing on this channel. And if you do value what I'm doing on this channel, then please head on over to my Patreon page and consider contributing a small amount to my work because I'm not going anywhere, people. I'll be doing this for a long, long time, people. This is my life's work. So if you can contribute a, a small amount, you know, I highly appreciate it. So I hope you all got a lot out of today. And Gloria, I hope that answers your question. And stay well, stay healthy out there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Shanti, shanti, shanti.